frame is in your game. Okay. All right. And the strength of your inner game is directly connected to one thing and one thing only. Okay. 30 seconds on the clock. Chat, let's see what you got. Inner game is directly connected to one thing. 30 seconds on the clock. Let me see what you guys have to say. I'll pull it up on the screen here. Let's see. Who's going to be the first one to pop their little answer up here? Go ahead. Don't be shy. Self-image. Okay. Nice try. Self-love. Positive self-dialogue. Self-esteem. Self-worth. Confidence. Self-validation. Your love and your respect for yourself. Inner game. Close. Confidence. Inner self. Esteem. <laughs> Esteem. That's too easy at the end there. Okay. Subconscious mind. Okay. So, right. A couple people got it right. Shout out to Harry Zikos, who is obviously a veteran. Self-love. And shout out to Thaddeus Round Walker. Your love and your respect for yourself. Absolutely. Okay. That is what it is right there. Your inner game is directly connected to your amount of self love okay that is the most important part okay and exactly right here love yourself respect yourself and how you practice self communication so important okay self love self love okay why do you think guys tolerate bad behavior with women okay you know why they tolerate bad behavior and shit with women because they don't love themselves enough okay if you don't love yourself enough you're not going to value yourself and if you don't value yourself you're not going to seek the best for yourself and if you're not going to seek the best for yourself your whole life is going to be a fucking participation trophy okay Self-love is the most important component of frame. Okay? It's the most important component. And your amount of self-love correlates to the most important thing. Okay? Which is... Boundaries. Okay. Boundaries. Okay. Boundaries are what you're okay with versus what you're not okay with. And standing up for yourself, okay, when your boundaries are being encroached upon, when people are violating you, okay? So let's talk about that, okay? In life, your boundaries, okay, your boundaries will be tested, okay? And there's one of two things that are going to happen, okay? You either enforce them. Or you don't enforce them. Okay. For example, let's talk about the number one thing guys ruin their lives over and don't enforce their boundaries along. That's relationships. Okay. So many guys, when they get in a relationship with a girl, whether you're casually seeing her, or your whatever, okay? It could be in the early stages. It could be in the middle stages. It could be in the late stages, okay? If you tell a girl something, for example, if you say, look, here's the deal, okay? 
I'm going to date you. All right. And we're kind of in that dating slash talking stage. Okay. But if you at any point start messaging other men, this interaction between us is over effective immediately. Okay. That's a personal boundary that I have, right? If I'm, if, if, if you get the fucking privilege to date me, cause I'm fucking the man. All right. If you get the privilege to date me and you have the audacity to text another man who let's be honest, if a guy's texting you, he wants to fuck you. Okay. I'm not okay with that. Okay. I'm not okay with that. And that's a boundary for me. And that's a boundary for a lot of guys. So when the boundary, when the boundary is violated, okay. Now you have to enforce it. Okay. And women, the masters of not taking accountability, they will lie. They will manipulate. They will try everything in their power to break that boundary because they want to fucking have their cake and eat it too. Okay. And, this, and not all women, but in situations like this, when a woman does that, now it's up to you to enforce it. Okay. And the enforcing is very simple. It's not like you can take her phone and force her to block every guy and all that. Shit. The enforcement is removing her from your life. Okay. You guys, and here's the thing I'm going to give, I'm going to break it down. All right. If you come from a single mother household and you come from a household where there's just one parent, okay, you typically have a degree of abandonment issues, okay? And the thing is, when people have abandonment issues, it's hard for them to let people go because they're struggling for love. They're struggling for validation. And the reason they're struggling for love and the reason they're struggling for validation is because they were not raised in a proper, happy, healthy household where they got all the love, the validation, and the security from their parents. There's a void in there. And a lot of guys go, I mean, girls too, with the whole daddy issues thing, but there's an equally amount of guys with mommy issues. Uh, that's, that's a huge modern cultural problem. And people who have problems with abandonment issues, they have problems cutting people off. But you have to get used to cutting people off because to have what you to get what you want in life, you have to let go of what you don't want. A lot of you guys, you see a chick and you're like, okay, I met this bitch at a fucking club. She drinks alcohol three, four times a week at home and the club. This really doesn't mesh with me well, but I'm getting pussy. So I guess I'll go along with it for now. That's going to bite you in the ass down the road because red flags are red flags, okay? Red flags are red flags. And when you violate your personal standards and your personal boundaries, you're going to get burned. If you make a deal with the devil, you're going to get burned. If you, if you get in bed with the devil, you're going to get fucked, okay? You have to master the art of cutting people off. Negativity is a poison. Toxicity is a poison, okay? These people who are mentally unstable, these people who are liars, these people who lack ethics, these people who do not respect you, that's the, the core issue. When they violate your boundaries after you clearly made it evident that this is a boundary, if you stick around, you know what she's going to think? This guy's a fucking sucker. I could do whatever I want. If you take a girl back after she cheats on you, she's going to cheat on you again because she cheated once because something was missing. She was missing something. Either she's f***ed up in the head, she's got some kind of issues, or maybe she's just a bitch that loves to get kicked down, okay? If that's not okay with you, you have to enforce because a lot of guys, they will forgive. They'll be like, oh, well, she was drunk or she was this and she was that. All you're doing is rationalizing to yourself why you don't deserve the best for yourself. And the only reason somebody would not strive to give themselves the best thing possible for themselves is because they lack self-love. They lack confidence and they lack enforcement of their boundaries. Okay.